We all want to look our best and often put our trust in brand names that we know. But those very same brands are using chemicals that will kill us. And the chemicals they use will stay in our bodies for years. I'm not sure this is what they meant when they said beauty kills. Hello, and welcome to the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. Today, we are talking about cosmetic chemicals. As we know, not all chemicals are bad. In fact, some of them are really, really good for you. Uh, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, all play important roles in the way our bodies function. Then there's Delta 9, and well, <laughs> you know. But then we have nasty, dangerous chemicals like chloroform and arsenic. Most of us know to avoid these. But what happens when the cosmetics that we use every day contain dangerous chemicals? If it doesn't say arsenic on the side, how am I supposed to know what is good or bad in a list of random ingredients? Enter forever chemicals. These are highly persistent, potentially harmful chemicals known as PFAS, which is short for per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These are a group of man-made chemicals used in products such as lotions, cleansers, nail polish, shaving cream, foundation, lipstick, eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara. So this isn't just an episode for people who wear makeup. This is for everyone. If you use shaving cream or even just wash your face, then this matters. PFAS chemicals are made up of a chain of linked carbon and fluorine atoms, which do not degrade in the environment, which means they can stay in your body for years and in the environment for centuries. Data is only known on a few of these, but they have been linked to things like high cholesterol and thyroid diseases. As the chemist and physicist Graham Peasley of the University of Notre Dame in Indiana says, there is no known good PFAS. Based on the research that Peasley and some colleagues did, they found that 52% of over 200 tested products had high fluorine concentrations. So what does this really mean? We can just say that everything is okay in moderation, right? Well, yes, but when you consider the low levels that are acceptable in one thing, they're now stacked up with all the other products you're using. Meaning if your foundation has an FDA approved amount of a specific chemical that is deemed to be safe, well, it may not be so safe once you put the blush, mascara, and eyeliner on that all meet the same standard. You just amplified that chemical. Then to make things worse, these chemicals get washed down the drain and can end up in drinking water. And we already know that medications should never be flushed down the drain because they do make it into the drinking water. So of course, cosmetics will get in there as well. That same drinking water that has a regulated amount of added fluoride already. So now we just push the safe level to dangerous by simply washing our faces. During that study by Peasley's team, they tested 231 cosmetics for fluorine, and this is what they found. 63% of foundations, 55% of lip products, 82% of waterproof mascaras, all contained high levels of fluorine. Anything that was labeled waterproof had especially high levels. And that is just one PFAS. Many products contained at least four chemicals and as many as 13, but only one actually listed it on their ingredients. Once many of these chemicals enter your body, they will break down and often into other PFAS, which can lead to cancers and low birth weights. The list of 13 PFAS found here what is that? Wow, she's beautiful. Maybe she's born with it. Or maybe it's perfluid, perfluid thing. This crap is used to make things resistant to oil, grease, and water. So it's easy to find them in things like food packaging and Teflon. Now imagine putting Teflon on your lipstick to keep it long lasting. Now you're eating pounds of that within your lifetime. Here are just some of the brand names they tested. Unfortunately, the study did not specify which brands contained these chemicals. And considering the fact that not everyone seems to let us know based on their ingredients, it may be impossible for us to know. And that's scary. As it stands, regulatory agencies often allow companies to claim PFAS as a trade secret. Hopefully, this research pushes new regulations and opens up information for consumers. 
for now, the easy thing to do is to avoid what would be a waterproof or water resistant product. Considering that roughly half the tested products did not have these PFAS, then we know they can obviously be made without them. I would expect brands to start making it clear if they are free of these chemicals, much like we see already with parabens. On the bright side, the No PFAS in Cosmetics Act would require the Food and Drug Administration to ban the chemicals within 270 days. That bill was brought forward by Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell and Republican Susan Collins. What, a Republican? <laughs> well, that is a bipartisan bill then. In a statement by Collins, she said Americans should be able to trust that the products they are applying to their hair or skin are safe. To help protect people from further exposure to PFAS, our bill would require the FDA to ban the addition of PFAS to cosmetic products. Retailers like Walmart and Target have already announced that they are taking action against these chemicals. But like we already stated, it's hard to know who is using what. So they can really only control their in-house brands, but that's a start. In the meantime, you can check your products using EWG's Skin Deep website. It's linked down below for your convenience. They cover a lot of stuff from makeup to sunscreen. They even have sections for men and babies, which let's face it, that's kind of the same section, am I right? <laughs> As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?